Greetings and welcome again to a wonderful and simple class, Masidi. This week, we cover the skin. Breathe, inhabit, feel and observe. Cultivate the four states of being while the technicians set up technicalities. Breathe. Inhabit your body. Feel. Even if there's nothing to feel, observe. Be conscious in your mind and call it the body. Greetings, everyone. In this process, we started with the thing inside the thing, the core, bone marrow, asti maja, asti maja, asti maja. And then the tendons, High, um, high flexibility, low elasticity. Snayu. Tendons and ligaments. Snayu. Snayu. We went on to the muscle in function, Lasica, and that's the object, Pezzle. La Sica Peso. La Sica Peso. La Sica Peso. And then the nervous system. Chetta Samhati. Chetta Samhati. Chetta Samhati. Uh, after the nervous system, we covered the inner organs, all of them. Koshta. 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 And the outer organs, mainly the senses, Indriya, Indriya, Indriya. And this week, skin, Charman, C A R M A N, Charman. C-A in Sanskrit is pronounced cha, like a soft T um, at the beginning, cha. Okay. Charman. The skin, charman. I woke up hours ago and... I have the symptoms of just waking up right now. Well, I was fine two hours ago. Take some coffee. <laughs> In the dictionary, the Sanskrit dictionary, charman means skin. It also means leather like the skin of uh, animals. 
It also means bark, the skin of a tree. So charman is all of these. Okay? So it's not exclusive to skin. It's also fur. While there is another word in Sanskrit for the hair, charman also covers the hair and the nails. Okay? Everything that is external, eyebrow, lashes, all of that. Okay? Charman is your skin and anything that envelopes you and protects you. Okay. And that is Charman. If we would replace the Cha with a Ka, Karman would mean the cause or the causality. Charman is the definition, the place of definition, okay? Let's study the Bija. Again, if you have not studied the language of soul, the meaning of the vowels and the consonants, it doesn't matter if you follow the next little bit, okay? Cha alone is and or with, okay? Cha. The R is about a definition or something specific. Man is, depending on context, it can mean that or an object. It can also mean that it's mine. You know, you've seen mantras with, uh, with man at the end, Vajra man and Vajra nam, which has just a slight variation of meaning. So, Charman, not in the dictionary, but in Bija, it means and that thing too. Okay. And that. Okay. What do we mean by this? The skin or the, your surface, basically, Charman is your surface, is where as a human you'll identify what is you as opposed to what is not you. Okay. So in the Bija, and then there is that, which means something else. Your consciousness does not end at the surface of your skin, but your body does end at the surface of your skin. And this is where in nature we identify what is inside and outside. The skin is not inside or outside. It is that limit. Well, not only the skin, anything that is charman, your hair, your nails, the surface of the eyes would be part of charman. It's anything that is the place where everything inside is inside and everything else is outside. That is Charman. The role of the skin is to identify what is supposed to be you and what is supposed to be an intruder. So in Bija, Charman means, and then there is that thing. <laughs> okay if we want to put poetry on it or dramatize it. In the dictionary, charman is any protective surface that is biological. Okay. 
and that is charma. Pay attention to your skin, flexibility a bit, but mostly elasticity. The best properties of the skin is elasticity. The best property of the hair is flexibility and not elasticity. Okay. So in Charma, there's, there's a lot of variations of elasticity and flexibility. The nails have none, almost no flexibility. And pretty much no flexibility at all, uh, elasticity at all, sorry. You understand the concept of elasticity and flexibility. But if we focus mostly on the skin itself, elasticity, elasticity. Imagine the skins of your cells well hydrated, well nourished. With um, natural collagen that gives it its mushy pulpous feeling and whatever other medical fact I ignore that gives it its elasticity. That's one aspect that we're aiming with Charman. We're not necessarily focused on beauty, but beauty would be a side effect if you have a very healthy skin. The proper amount of oil A healthy amount of sebum, not too much, but not too little. A healthy skin, charman. And to finish off this contemplation, healthy nails healthy hair, healthy hair at the stem and along the entire strands. A healthy charman. Deep breath. Now a bit of personal growth. <laughs> Swastya, self-contained. It is an art of discernment to identify properly what is your responsibility and what is not. in your mind to take responsibility for your own feelings and what you have created outside and not take responsibility for what others have created. Last week I was communicating with two friends Friend A did something good, but he, he put tools somewhere else where they had to probably be put. Friend B 
came to where he remembered the tools were and they were not there at the wrong place because they had been properly stored. He says, hey, where are these tools? Friend A said, oh, I'm sorry. I, I put them back in the correct drawer. I, I just put them back in the, in the toolbox. These tools had been lying around for days. They had been not properly cared for by friend B. But friend A felt sorry because friend B was angry. Okay, so you, I hope you follow my story. Someone had done the correct thing, finally. And the other was disappointed, slightly irritated about it. And the person who did the good thing felt bad about it, okay? So this is a inappropriate taking of responsibility. It was, it was not for the first person to feel responsible of the trials of another who was not doing things correctly at the first place, okay? So that's just a little story. Identify yourself in your behavior. Do you feel sorry when someone is messy and you deem you do things cleanly, but the other cannot find themselves in a mess. Well, if it was their room, it belongs to them to do to put the tools where they want, but it was not their room. It was the the first person's room. So expand on this. Do you feel sorry? For doing something good that would displease another. It happens, right? We do this. Do something virtuous. Do something compassionate. Kind. Or simply responsible. And then someone with judgments. And control issues is displeased. And we will feel guilty. Not because we did anything wrong, but because someone else is mad. Guilt has nothing to do with if you did something right or wrong. Guilt has something to do with if someone is mad at you or not, if you feel loved or not. Regardless of the quality of your behavior. You understand that? This is the emotion of guilt. You can do everything right and still someone will be disappointed at you and you will feel guilt for doing the right thing. Because someone else has their own issues unresolved, okay? So, it is an art to take back your own power, not feel responsible for someone else's vicious behaviors, not take responsibility for someone else getting mad at you, but honestly and diligently identify, did I do something wrong? I did nothing wrong. It's okay. And if you feel guilt anyway, be honest about it. You did things right and still feel guilt for someone being angry at you. Embrace it. That is how much you need to be loved by another when they are actually wrong. Okay? It's about this dependence to be loved by others at any cost. The skin and any aspect of the charman is consistently trying to identify what belongs to you and what doesn't. And in our mind, this is where we have to take responsibility for our actions. Let's say a decade ago, 
student ask me to show them their reaction. Okay. Actually, two students like, yes, if, if you can show us anything in the ego, good, I will. But I feel that if I just tell you now, you're not going to get it because you need an experience to live it. It was a couple. The man was honest. He wanted to see his ego. The girlfriend was not honest. She didn't really want to see her ego, but she had to ask to do like her boyfriend. So, you know, I, I did a judgment call. I waited for them to forget. Two days, something like that. I don't remember the details. Because if I try to do something to show them the reaction now, they're prepared. Like, okay, we're going to have to look. And then they're in control and the reaction would not rise. So at one point, just walking, walking out of seminar, I see the guy stalking with a friend. The girlfriend is there and there are two beautiful people. And I just go and I slap the butt of the girl, bam, and I make a verbal comment. Look at that ass. And I move out. These two people were filled with judgment regarding sexuality. So the guy was like, like the girl and the guy were, were first astonished and then mad. And they stayed disappointed and angry for a while before they decided to take their responsibility. But here, I had to take responsibility. They were mad because of my actions, even if they actually ask for this kind of revelation. I was the one responsible because I'm the one who created that. Do you understand this? So when they stayed angry at me for acting with such a disrespectful behavior, I had to accept I have created that. I felt guilt, not because I felt it was wrong, but it was arrogant, disrespectful, inappropriate in today's society. I had successfully showed them reactions they have in their ego. And it is never pleasant. If their judgment would have been about food, I would have done that. If their judgment would have been about um, self-importance, uh, role, identity, I would have attacked that. But no. It was their extreme jealousy, these two beautiful people that are constantly courted by other people around because they're beautiful. That jealousy and that fear of losing the other was their thing, you know? So yeah, revealing an ego reaction is never beautiful. It is never appropriate. It is an arrogant action meant to provoke a reaction. So of course, it's not going to be a nice gesture of compassion. No. But you see, I could have told myself I am not responsible for them being angry at me for many days because they ask for it. The true discernment there is I am responsible. Even if they ask for it, I am the one who acted to provoke it. And I have to take charge of the choices I make in life, including how I decided to teach. Now, in the last decade, maybe a bit less, but almost, I decided to stop this kind of teaching. But early in the Maria, I would do that to those who ask for it, not to those who... Rarely to those who didn't ask for it. Now try to find a place inside you where you justify being irresponsible or not being responsible because you say, 
but they ask for it. Maybe they don't ask for it verbally, but let's say someone is acting really bad around you. Some Someone is acting inappropriately, disturbing you. And then somewhere in your mind, you have the, the, that typical English expression, they're asking for it. They're really asking for it. You know, do you understand that? And then you would act in a certain way. And then you would say inside you to sleep well at night. But they are the ones who acted in such a way that forced me to do my actions or to say the words I said. Because they asked for it. Or they were provoking you. I mean, <laughs> you know how children say, but he started it. Yes, he started it. Did you need to protect yourself or were you not really threatened? You see, it's a discernment of when is it really justice or vengeance or reaction it's important to be prudent in life to defend yourself when your rights are being hindered your fundamental rights and then to know when it's just your pride being flustered and it didn't really matter okay It is important to know where your responsibilities lie. And that is not something I can teach you now in a, in a simple class. I just can teach you that learning that discernment is part of your path now. There will be regret. There will be shame in your discoveries. If you scan your past and realize many reactions you had, actions you choose to take, words you said, were reacting to someone else's behavior and you simply did not have peace in you at that time. You were not a master of yourself. And you would think they were always provoking me. Oh, recently, I uh, a few months ago, I had these kind of things like, but that person is provoking me, like constantly. Yes, it belongs to me to find where I am provoked. This is so hard. I am vulnerable to be provoked by others where is my weakness? Where is my pride? Where is this precious identity that I need to protect? Where instead of returning the anger, I could say, what is making me lose peace now inside me? That is very hard path. The poison of the hatred is quick to summon reactions. What is my responsibility? What belongs inside and what belongs outside? Work on that. You won't achieve perfection, <laughs> mostly because Perfection is not a concept that applies to the soul, but only to the human judgments. So let's talk about perfection and imperfection. You eat a meal that you really enjoy. Ah, oh, that meal is perfect. 
and to someone else's taste, mm, too much of this or that flavor. It is not perfect. It is imperfect. It's subjective, okay? By basically, something perfect is a subjective judgment regarding a state of things. If someone is perfect or not, is a subjective reaction or a judgment to a state of things. For the soul, there is no perfection or imperfection. There are states of things. Ah, this is how it is. It comes with the flavor of the experience. So perfection and imperfection is human. It is not animic or of the soul. Is human okay so a lot of our judgments and reactions about how good or bad are people how they have acted why are they provoking us or why do they do this this dream we have of reaching perfection And for the soul is just various states of things. Contemplate that. So there's two, two aspects here that we want to work on. To free ourselves of the belief of perfection. Which makes me think, someone asked me a question. Maha. Have you reached a state of perfect enlightenment? Meaning that you are completely free of anger, greed, and ignorance. Hatred, greed, and ignorance. Well, to, and to that I answered, well, if that is your definition, to, without, to be without any of those ever, then no one has ever really enlightened. For Jesus has been angry uh, in his late days. While being very accomplished, he lost control and got mad and even violent. On his last day, Sakyamuni Buddha got angry at his students, disappointed and reacted. Krishna... <laughs> There's a repertoire of stories where he allowed his impulses to take over here and there. Because he was a prince, he was raised with the idea he could do whatever he wants. So it took him a long while to decide not to get angry at people. Or not to follow just, ah, you know, his, his passionate animal reactions. So, the word free in English, sugar-free, means without absolutely any sugar. But the word free in any other language means not to be a slave of. It's completely different. So, to be free of anger does not mean that you never live anger. It means that that anger is not the thing that chose for you how you will act or speak or make choices. Okay? And in this sense, yes, I am free of anger most of the time. Surprisingly, I am a human. <laughs> okay? So it's important to, uh, to understand that... Rashidva, Shivagam, Asun, Kanagagni, and myself, and you know the great ones, you know, Carmen Afonso, Lakshmi Yantra, you know, that, that whole bunch of, of, of elite people that you look up to have moments of anger. And they are very, very quick, very quick. At taking back control, even if the anger continues, their choices would be 
controlled and contained, if not virtuous anyway. Okay, so it's important to understand that the word free in English means absolutely without, where in other languages it means not enslaved to. Okay? Cool. So that your judgment about what is perfection and imperfection is, is a completely human standard about states of things, states of beings and states of things, experiences. What is the current flavor of this and that? For the soul is just, ah, various experiences with no judgment of quality in there, of what is supposed to be or not supposed to be, that the judgment is human. Okay. With that in mind, what is my responsibility in this manifest world where events happen? What is my responsibility? And what, what is the responsibility of others regarding their reactions? It's, it's an art to discern responsibility. Okay? <laughs> And that will be the high philosophical study for the body-mind relationship of Charman. The art for your body to properly identify what belongs to you and what doesn't, what is healthy for you and what is not, and deal with it efficiently with a good immune system that if you remember, Start with Asti Maja, the bone marrow. Asti Maja is about healthy bone marrow and healthy bones. And Snayu, the tendon and ligaments. Lasika Pezel, the muscle. Chetta Samhati, the brain and the nervous system. Koshta, the inner organs. Indriya, the outer organs, mainly the senses. Charman. The skin. And these are the seven steps of the Dehachita. Next week, we will have the last class of Dehachita. It was pleasant. Thank you for watching. Thank you for practicing. If only during this class, and even better if you do it on your own after that. Wonderful process. All right, see you next week.